Hello and welcome to the Summer Club Online with Cumber Baptist Church. I'm Henry and good to join with you once again. Would you believe this is the second last episode of the Summer Club Online and it has just flown in. But as much as it's second last, don't need to get sad. We have lots of fun and enjoyment and activities and challenges and of course a talk from God's Word that is all coming up in a few moments time. We're going to be looking really at the, the last part of the armour of God this week and then next week with our final episode we're going to do some sort of a, a recap but all of that is to look forward to and as usual we'll start off with our activities so let's get to that and let's start off with the first activity. Okay, are you ready for the first activity? The first activity you're going to need to go and get some balloons. So I might mean you have to go to the shop to get some, but hopefully you have some in your house and you're going to have to blow them up. So hopefully you can do that. If not, you're going to have to get some help with them. Maybe an older brother or sister, maybe your mom and dad can help you out with that. So you need to get one balloon to start off with. And it's a very simple one. So here's one that I've already blown up. And the challenge, the activity is just with, with, one, with one hand behind your back, and with using just your, the other hand, try and keep the balloon up, okay? Now, this seems very easy, okay? You can do it, you can do this all day long, okay? So, I'm using with my right hand, okay? Just to keep it up, just one touch, nice little touches, and trying to keep it up, okay? Now, it's a little bit difficult if you try with the, the hand that you don't write with. For me, it's my left hand, okay? So you can just try that. Try to stay in the same place, just try to keep it up as long as you can and you can time yourself. Now, if you really want to make a bit of a challenge with it, don't use one balloon, but use two balloons, okay? So just using one hand, for me I'm going to use my right hand, try and keep two balloons up. Now this is going to go all over the place, so you're just trying to keep them up as long as you can and they can sort of go all over the place. It's a bit of a challenge, but see how long you can go and hopefully you'll be able to get a bit longer than me. Okay, so have fun trying those challenges out. Well, as I said at the beginning of our time together, at the start of the video, we have reached the final piece of the armor of God that the Apostle Paul shares with us in Ephesians chapter 6. We've been looking at this for the last, well, five previous weeks and now we come to the sixth week and we're going to look at the final piece of equipment this week and then next week in our final online episode of the Summer Club we'll do a bit of a, a recap and sort of just remind us, remind ourselves of what the, the main things that Paul wants us to, to think about and it's really good to be able to do that and we've reached the, the final piece of equipment in this thing that we've been talking about, the armour of God, as we realise that this is armour that we need to put on, if we're Christians, to put on, as we are involved in a battle, not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. So it's really important that we think about these things and that we are aware of it because we live in a pretty dark and broken world, as we've been thinking about each week. I wonder if you can remember the five previous weeks and the five previous items that the Paul shares with us. In the first week, we thought about the, the belt of truth, and then we thought about the breastplate of righteousness. Then we thought about shoes that are fitted with the, the gospel of, of peace. And then the fourth item that we're to think about is the, the shield of faith. And then last week, we thought about the helmet of salvation. And those five pieces of equipment are quite similar once we think about them. And I said it each week, and really what they do is they provide protection. If a soldier was going into battle, we would, we would think about those things that we've thought about in the last five weeks as offering protection. We think of a helmet that offers protection and a shield and breastplate and, and shoes and and a belt they're, they're, they're to protect that they are to protect you wouldn't really think about them as a form of attack would you you wouldn't really think of a soldier going in uh, with uh, thinking their main weapon that they're going to use is their shield or their their helmet 
that's not really what they're designed for. They're mainly designed to protect. So there's the, the first five items. But then we come to the sixth and the final item that Paul shares with us. And it's not primarily a form of defense, but it's actually a weapon to be used on the attack. We come to think about what Paul calls the sword of the spirit. Now here's my wonderful sword here, glorious. And I think there would be more power in a fart than this plastic sword. You can even look at it not there. And it's not even straight, but it is still my lovely sword that I have. And as a soldier would use this, this would be their main form of attack. It would be crucial for them to have uh, some form of some weapon. And primarily we think of soldiers, we think of, of a sword. A sword is a fairly uh, impactful weapon that ha can cause a lot of damage um, to an opponent. And Paul talks about the sword of the spirit as the final piece of equipment. And I suppose the first question that comes into our mind is, well, what is that? What is exactly is Paul talking about? Well, thankfully, once he says about the sword of the spirit, he actually tells us in the next breath exactly what it is. So we're to take up the sword of the spirit. And then Paul says, which is the word of God. The word of God, really what Paul's talking about is this, the Bible, God's word. We are to use this. This is to be our only weapon that we need in our spiritual battle. Think with me for a moment with the life of Jesus. We've thought about that uh, each week. We've sort of cast our mind back to look at, look at Jesus. And throughout his life, he used the word of God. Now, Jesus for in the time he lived in, he didn't have the New Testament, obviously. He just had the Old Testament. That was his Bible. And we see throughout his, his life, just many, many examples where he used the, the Bible. Think about whenever he was tempted by the, the devil in the wilderness and all these temptations that was thrown at him. How did he deal and manage with that? Well, he quoted the Bible. He quoted passages in the Bible back to Satan and that was able to help him to overcome that. Think of his teaching and when he would have went around and taught and, and, and shared with people. He was always drawing on what was shared in, in the Old Testament, his, his Bible. He was teaching the word of God. And then we think about all the prophecies and the promises that we've been really thinking about specifically with over the last number of weeks that were made about Jesus and how he fulfilled them. And he lived up to those expectations and we think about that throughout his life and how he healed people and ultimately how he went to the cross and died but then rose again three days later. Jesus was all about the word of God. He was all about teaching it, sharing it and ultimately living it out. And that goes to show us that Jesus really believed the word of God. He really believed in this book the Bible he really truly had faith because he knew that it was the word of God that was the sword of the spirit Jesus was using the sword of the spirit the word of God every day of his life that's what he was putting his faith in the very word of God I suppose as we think about well how does that impact our lives what, what are we supposed to do well how does that actually uh, influence how we live how are we to you know put this into practice there's a number of things that come into my mind that i want to share with you now as we as we draw things to a close and the first thing i would love to share with you guys who are listening at home is just raise really a simple thing about this book the bible I know that this is a book, it's pages and pages and words and words and sometimes we don't even know what those words are or we can't even pronounce those words, but it's a book, it's a special book, but more than that, it's God's book and that means a lot of things. It means it's just not some or any ordinary book, but it's a book that is God's, this is his word and that means that we can put our full trust in it. We know God doesn't lie or tell any uh, any fibs or makes mistakes. God isn't into that at all. So that means that we can bank on this book. We can put our full trust and faith on it in it. And that is really, really important. And we know it's God's book, God's word. That means that it's for our good. This isn't just a book of rules that sort of like take all our fun and joy away. No, complete opposite of that. 
It's actually to show us how to live properly and how to live a full and joyful life. We can trust God's book because it's from God. We know everything that is contained within it to be true. So then we can put our faith in it. And more than that, we should be eager to know more about it. You know, we never master the Bible. We never sort of like at one point in our lives go, yep, I know everything about it. I, I'm going to sit the Bible test. And I'm going to get 100%. No, that's not really how it works. You know, we could spend our entire life studying this book. And whenever we come to the end of our life, we still wouldn't really know all that's contained within it. So we should be eager to know more about it because it's God's book. And we should want to know more about the author. We should be eager to know more and want to and have a desire to learn more about it. But the final thing I want to share with you is, is that as we think about it in the context of what Paul's talking about and the fact that it's be used as, as a weapon, as a form of attack, it means that we don't, you know, just sort of keep it tucked underneath our arms, but we actually use it. And how we use it, I'm going to suggest two really practical ways, is that we try to memorize it. Now, this is going to lead into our challenge in a few moments' time, so I'll just sort of leave that there. But we should be wanting to learn more and actually have it stuck in our minds. Think about the songs that you know, and, you know, as great and wonderful as they are, you, you, a tune starts and you know all the lyrics to the songs. How great would it be if you were able to uh, memorize the same amount of uh, Bible verses as you did songs? And that goes the same for me. But the second thing is that we would share it, you know, it, it's not that we go around, you know, slapping people with the Bible and, you know, tearing them down. But what we think about, what, what Paul's wanting us to think about with using it, using it as a weapon is that we would share it. We would use it. We would use it as, as a form of comfort whenever we're, we're struggling in the difficulties of the world. That we, we would look to the God's word and be encouraged and comforted. But that we would also go and tell people about it. You know, we wouldn't sort of keep it tucked away. We wouldn't, you know, just keep it hidden. But we would actually want to talk about it. Talk about what we've been learning. Thinking about all the wonderful things, all the wonderful stories. And want to actually share it and talk to people about Jesus. And what Jesus has done for us. And how Jesus loves us and has came to save us. We want to tell people. You know, as Christians, we have such good news. We have good news because of Jesus and we need to tell people about Jesus and in so doing God will, will help us in our battle as we are filled with his word the more we focus and the more time we spend in his word the more we will be able to live in this difficult world and the difficulties that come upon us day in day out that God will help us as we spend more time in his word so that is the sixth and that is the final piece of equipment that Paul shares with us that is the armour of God and as I said next week we'll do a recap and look back on all the things that we have considered. So we've come to the final part of our second last episode of the summer club online and we've come to our challenge and as i said just a few moments ago in the talk well my challenge is very simple uh, and it's something that we thought about a few weeks ago remember i challenged you to memorize one of the verses in ephesians chapter 6 regarding the armor of god well i, I would challenge you to think about what is your favorite bible verse okay maybe you have a, a favorite bible verse and you, you might know it but i'm going to challenge you guys to go away and memorize it to go away think about it maybe you don't have a favorite bible verse go away and think about well what is my favorite bible verse and then go and memorize it and maybe learn about what it actually means read what happens uh, just before it in the bible and then read on below underneath it to see well what does it actually mean as well so it'd be really good to actually understand it more fully so there's my challenge for you maybe you do know your favorite bible verse off by heart well then my challenge for you is to go and think of another verse maybe it's one of the verses that we've thought about so far in ephesians chapter 6 relating to the armor of god so there's a challenge 
for you. You can go away and think of another verse that you could go and memorize. And that is really good. That is really important as we've just thought about, as that is good to fill our uh, head with uh, the knowledge of, of the Word of God. Just think of like, all the silly things that you know. I know some really silly things in my head and it's really insignificant and not important. And how much better would it be if we were able to fill our mind with God's word? It'd be super and it'd be very helpful to us. So that's your challenge for this week. And this is our second last week. And that means next week, it's the final episode. So we'll have a special time a special video next week which I hope that you're looking forward to and I'm sure that you are keeping well and I will see you all again next week for our last episode of the Summer Club Online. Take care, care guys, see you later.